so much happening. And you don't know why he's like, what are you like, oh, look over there, shoot that, no, get, oh, wow, no, get me that. You know, it's that kind of thing. But it's got its own rewards, too, because you get to go to towns like, uh, uh, where, what town are we in now? <laughs> I don't even know. Also, the guys can get through the grip, the Apple, uh, AC, electrician, all that kit. They can get through on their MSP winger pack. And when those things are going to be things. fucking Come on, awesome. <laughs> I got spurs jingle Anyway, back to our story. When I grew up in Sonoma County, I, I was way up in the mountains in the wine country, and there was, you know, long, long periods of time where I would be stuck up in the hills with just me and the squirrels, you know. So I used to sit around a lot and just jam to records. Uh, I used to remember to jam to like, I used to like to jam to Creedence Clearwater Records and B.B. King, just stuff that had an easy beat. Or like with B.B. King, he had all these little guitar solos intertwined in his music, you know, so I could learn all the little solos and it was real time consuming and uh, it gave me something to do while, you know, I couldn't get down off the hill because I didn't drive yet when I was really young, gas prices were 25 cents a gallon. And, and then when I finally got a car, of course, they were a little bit more, but I used to put like 50 cents worth of gas in my car, which got me down to Denny's that night where I'd sit all night and drink coffee with my friends, and then it would get me back up to the house and, and down to the gas station the next day. It's no secret that I was never the tallest kid in class or the tallest among uh, my friends, and I think that probably has a lot to do with my fascination with really big things and uh, ever since I can remember when I was a little kid I was totally obsessed with dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, Diplodocus, I mean all these names that keep coming back to me. I'm also fascinated by ants because they seem to be the most effective form of life to where uh, they're not self-centered, they live for the group and they're willing to do whatever it takes. They don't think about their own life, it's just this is my job, this is what I have to do and somehow they manage to get it done. And I'm always looking at the ground when I'm walking around, you know, sort of gazing around, and when I get a glimpse of some kind of movement, it's usually an ant colony. Of course, um, when I was a teenager, I was into taking magnifying glasses and finding the ant colony and then getting the sun in the magnifying glass to burn the ants and then take firecrackers and stick them in the hole and blow them up. But uh, now that I'm a little bit older and a little bit more humane, uh, I'm kind of appreciative of, uh, you know, the ants and our insect kingdom. My, my mother always wanted us to be like the Kennedy kids. I don't know why. She dressed me up in this, like, German little outfit, you know? Like, you ever see those little German outfits that weird kids wear, like rich kids and everything? It was a really weird thing. And uh, she asked me one day, I guess when I was about 11 or something, she said, Rev, how would you like to get a crew cut? And I didn't know what a crew cut was. Um, and my brother told me it was a haircut that made girls come from all around just to see what you look like, just to see your sexy new haircut. And I said, well, I like that very much. And she took me down to the barber shop. I had, you know, pretty long hair and everything. And they took the, the razor and, ah, you know, all on my head. And then I hear the guy go, whoops. <laughs> and I guess he slipped. He didn't cut me or anything, but he went way too low and he had to even the rest of it out so there wouldn't be this weird low spot, you know, like a reverse mohawk on my head. And uh, when he was done, I was bald. Literally, I mean, I, there wasn't any hair to speak of. There, It was just so short. And he said, well, I guess I made it a little too short. I'm sorry. And <laughs> I mean, he turned me around in a chair and I couldn't believe that I was bald. On the way home, my brother and his friend were singing Cherokee People to me in the back of the car. Cherokee people! You know, <laughs> I was, I just felt terrible. I went to school and everyone thought I was the new kid. I mean, I didn't talk because I was so embarrassed and, hey, did you see the new kid? He's bald. <laughs> Even my best friends. Who are you? And when they found out it was me, it was pretty embarrassing and uh, 
you know, it was just one of those traumatic times in my life. There's been many. <laughs> my section is that everything you're watching is what I do. Thank you. <laughs> Last time we played this gig, there was this band, right? All these people are lined up here freaking out. And are you played this thing? Yeah. Yeah. Last time we played here, we played four songs and the cop made a stop. These people broke down the barricade and they were crawling up on the stage. Spinal tap, really? You know what I mean? Spinal tap star, you know what I mean? It's got the little arrows. See the cancelled? There's an umlaut there. I cut my umlaut off and now it's... Ah, welcome, welcome to Red Beach. Keith is lost, everybody. Wow. No way. Wait, I, I got it right here, right here, right here. I got it. Here we go. He's into all this stuff. Too. Fair and yeah. arrow. No. Fair and arrow. How do you like it? Are we there yet? That was one of my better arguments. I hope you get it. Right. The worst part of this job is being diplomatic, or in some cases, being dick-lomatic. <laughs> or it's an action. I want to lose this quad right here. Uh -huh. Big and heavy. I want to put it behind the stage. This is my invention. It's a workbench. It's going to be neon colors, and uh, it's called the G-Spot. That's what the, the G is here for. This one's a prototype. That's why it's all done in marker. It helps me do those lightning quick string changes during the winger set. The hardest thing about this job is keeping these picks to stay on the guitars when they start sweating. It's unbelievable. It's the hardest part of this job. But you know, like I always say, we're doing this all naturally for the good of the team. It's all coffee and cereal. And new symbols and cleaners and pledge. And, and actually, the lead from paint has helped me get through the day. Because I was painting all day. Just for Rod. My buddy Rod. 
Can you say raise?